Welcome. Let's take a look at finding when a particle is moving in either the positive direction or the negative direction. So our function here is s sub t equals t cubed minus 6t squared plus 18. And in a previous video, we saw that the velocity function here was 3t squared minus 12t, and that the velocity function equals 0 when t was 0 seconds or 4 seconds. So if we want to find when the um, particle is moving in the positive direction, movement is captured by velocity, and in the positive direction we would want velocity to be greater than 0. And then determining movement in the negative direction, again we must be moving, so this is a characteristic of velocity, and moving in the negative direction would indicate that we're interested in where velocity is 0. So we know that velocity equals 0 at t equals 0 and 4. And um, velocity can only change signs uh, around points at which velocity equals 0. So assuming that we start being interested in the behavior at time t equals 0, we start a stopwatch and start counting time. Um, we, t equals 0 and t equals 4 are points of interest to us. And what we want to do is we want to know how velocity is behaving uh, between those two points because velocity is equal to 0 at both of them, so the particle is not moving. So what happens is because s is a continuous function and v is a continuous function, um, the velocity function will be entirely positive on the whole interval from 0 to 4, or the velocity function will be negative on that entire interval. So to answer this question uh, about moving in the positive or negative direction, we simply need to determine the sign SIGN, positive or negative, of velocity uh, in the intervals between points and time where velocity is equal to zero. So we'll start by choosing a test point. Uh, I'm going to choose something simple to work with. Let's try t equals one. And my velocity at one is three times one squared minus 12 times 1. Now I'm not necessarily interested in that number. What I'm interested in is the sign, and we can see easily that this is a negative number. So we know that velocity is negative between 0 and 4. Now let's test our other interval. We only have a, we have only a second interval here from 4 onward. So let's uh, test something uh, nice and easy to work with, like maybe 10. 10 is a nice number to work with. So velocity at 10, especially with this function, we have 3 times 10 squared minus 12 times 10. And looking at that, um, the first term is 300 minus 120. 300 is definitely greater than the um, second number, so this is clearly positive. So on this interval, the velocity is positive. So let's go ahead and summarize. So first of all, we want to know when the particle is moving in a positive direction, and that's going to be when our velocity is positive. And notice that that happens for values of t greater than 4. So we could say when t is greater than 4, or we could use interval notation and say when it is 4 to infinity. We also want to know when it, our particle is moving in the negative direction. 
and we can see that happening on the interval from 0 to 4. So we could say uh, it's moving in a negative direction uh, using the inequality notation of 0 less than t less than 4, or using interval notation, uh, open parentheses, 0, comma 4, close parentheses. So now we want to look at finding and interpreting the acceleration of the particle at t equals 2. And let's go ahead and continue to impose the units on time of seconds. So acceleration is the limit as delta t goes to zero of the change in velocity over change in time. So this would lead us to conclude that acceleration is the derivative of velocity or dv dt and keeping in mind that velocity is the derivative of position, we could also interpret this as the second derivative of position with respect to time. So now let's think about finding and interpreting, interpreting the acceleration of the particle. So acceleration is going to be the second derivative of position with respect to time. And we know that um, the velocity function is uh, the first derivative, so this is going to be the derivative of velocity. And we already know that the velocity function is 3t squared minus 12t. And so that derivative is 6t minus 12. So our acceleration function is 6t minus 12. So now that we know what our acceleration function is, now that we've declared what that is, then let's go ahead and evaluate that at t equals 2 seconds. So at t equals 2 seconds, we have 6 times 2 minus 12, which equals 0. And coming back to um, find our units of measure, let's go back and revisit that um, acceleration is the derivative with respect to velocity of uh, velocity with respect to time. Uh, velocity having units of measure that are meters per second, time having units of measure that are seconds. So my acceleration here is 0 meters per second per second. Now sometimes this is shortened to be 0 meters per second squared, but that uh, notation of meters per second squared really obscures what the meaning of uh, in terms of um, units, what the meaning of acceleration is. So let's go ahead and see about interpreting what this means. And put simply in this case, uh, this means that the particle is not accelerating or decelerating uh, at t equals 2 seconds. Now, if our acceleration was positive, then the particle would be accelerating in the positive direction. And if this acceleration had been negative, our particle would have been accelerating in the negative direction. I hope this is helpful.